What's good? This is JVB representing SPD, and that is sportsperdium.com. And call it what you want, it was not a pretty game, but the Chicago Bears eked one out in Denver against the Broncos, 16-14, to and the hero was none other than Eddie Pinheiro, Pinheiro De Nero, Eddie Money, whatever the fuck his nickname is going to be, he was the hero. He was perfect on all four kicks, three field goals and an extra point, including two 50-plus yard field goals, including the game-winning 53-yard field goal, which led to my question again from last week. Why didn't Matt Nagy let this guy kick a 51-yard field goal in perfect conditions at home in week one against the Packers? But nevertheless, they allowed him to kick a 52-yard field goal early in the game, And then at the end of the game, he kicks a game-winning 53-yard field goal. And say what you want to say about the altitude in Denver, but he has a strong leg. That's why he won the job over Elliott Fry in the first place. He has a strong leg. So let the man kick the ball. Because as you see yesterday with that 52-yard field goal earlier, that built up a lot of confidence in him. That built up a lot of confidence in the team. And even though the offense was shitty again, you know, they gave not only the team but the coaching staff the confidence that, hey, this guy can kick a field goal if push come to shove. We need him to kick a 50-plus yard field goal, in which they needed him to kick a 50-plus yard field goal to win the game, and he made the fucking field goal. And the Bears won a game that, quite frankly, they shouldn't even won. You know, the defense was good. The defense was solid. And a little bit to my surprise, Joe Flacco played pretty decent yesterday. He played better than our quarterback. That's for sure. But Joe Flacco and Emmanuel Sanders had great chemistry yesterday. You know, Emmanuel Sanders had a great game yesterday. He made a lot of tough catches, got hit, but he held on to the ball. And then he had the touchdown at the end of the game, late in the game. And then he had the go-ahead two-point conversion. So Emmanuel Sanders had a really good game. Joe Flacco had a very solid game. He was playing smart, you know. He's playing like a Joe Flacco typically does, a game manager type of quarterback, getting positive yardage on easy plays, you know, dumping the ball off to Phillip Lindsay, letting Phillip Lindsay do a lot of work, get a lot of crucial fourth down conversions that kept the Broncos in the game. And with 31 seconds left, if you're a Denver Broncos fan, you probably thought, hey, we got this in the bag. We got Mr. Trubisky and this Bears offense coming up with 30 seconds left. They ain't going to be able to do nothing. You know, we should get this victory in our home opener against Chicago Bears. We got this. But say what you want to say about Mr. Trubisky and the Bears offense, but they did what they had to do at the end of the game to be in a position to win the game. You know, that was a big rough in the passer call on Bradley Chubb on Mr. Trubisky at the end of the game. Was it a good call? No, it wasn't, <laughs> to be honest. But at the end of the day, it's the NFL. The NFL officiating is not great at all. They're fucking trash. We saw that early in the game with Eddie Goldman. We saw that early in the game with Leonard Floyd with that uh, unnecessary roughness penalty. So there was a lot to be desired with the officiating. You know, the officiating was not good at all. But at the end of the day, Mitch Trubisky stepped up in the pocket, found Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson falls down with one second to go. Bears call timeout, and the rest is history. Eddie Pinheiro makes the game-winning 53-yard field goal. Bears win on the road in a tough environment against the Denver Broncos, 16-14. to A little more on the offense. You know, it was good to see David Montgomery out there a little bit more. You saw what he can do, making guys miss. I mean, sometimes he do a little bit too much with the moving, but you can see the talent. You can see how elusive he is compared to a guy like Mike Davis, and that's no knock on Mike Davis. He's a very solid running back, but we know who the most talented running back is. Even though the longest run last night or yesterday was uh, Cordero Patterson on that sweep play, gaining like 46 yards. But it was nice to see David Montgomery out there. And I hope that continues, you know, as we continue to progress throughout this season because he is the most talented running back you have. So why not use him? You know, why not use him more than all the other running backs? Because Tariq Corn is going to get his touches. They've been playing Tariq Corn a lot as a slot receiver. They've been putting him out there, and he does have his running plays as well. But let David Montgomery handle a lot of that. Because at the end of the day, 
Tariq Cohen is going to still get his opportunities, you know, playing a slot receiver, playing a receiver, getting his opportunities to make plays in his offense. And speaking about making plays, well, I did give Mitch credit. I gave Mitch credit for driving the Bears down the field, completing that pass to Allen Robinson, setting up Eddie Pinheiro to make that game-winning field goal. But, man, oh, man, oh, man. This guy's making me eat my words a little bit <laughs> because he has not been good. And, of course, motherfuckers going to continue to talk. Oh, man, told you, man, Mr. Trubisky ain't shit. Mr. Trubisky trash, you know. He not a quarterback, man. Blah, 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 and all this bullshit. But, sure, right now, Mr. Trubisky is not playing well. This Bears offense is not playing well. You would think after the first year with Matt Nagy, that this offense will run much better in year two. But it's not. And that needs to change. And I'm not saying they're going to be a top 10 offense, total offense, but at least show signs of progression. At least show signs of improvement. You know, if you're a top 16 offense in this league, that's the top 50% of the NFL. If you're in the top 16 in total offense with this defense, sky's the limit. But at this moment, shit, it ain't no good. Because real talk, they should be 0-2 right now. But they eked it out. And that deserves props, you know, because it's not easy winning on the road in the NFL. It's not easy winning, period, in the NFL. So, yeah, props to them for winning the game, but this offense needs to get better. And, yes, Mr. Trubisky is partial to blame. But blame also lies on Matt Nagy. You know, Matt Nagy came out, he had his press conference and everything, and he talked about he was proud of the offense not committing any pre-snap penalties. He was happy that the offense didn't turn the ball over. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like a moral victory. That sounds like, a hey, the offense is trash, and I don't know if I can fix it. <laughs> That's what that sounded like. But guess what? This needs to be fixed as soon as possible. So as a team that should be better, you need to go out there next week, Monday night, and the defense is the defense. This is, to me, the best defense in the league, period. And if you don't agree with that, they damn sure in the top five. But more weeks than not, your defense is going to show up. But next week, we need to see this offense do something. We need to see this offense start playing like a comparable NFL offense in 2019. You see all these other teams throwing the ball, throwing all these deep passes. You got these fucking analytical guys talking about air yardage. How many air yards is this guy getting? We need to see that. We just aren't waiting for maturation from Mitch Trubisky, but we're waiting for maturation for this whole fucking offense, coaching on down to the personnel. So over the next three weeks, Before you go on by in week six, against the Redskins, at home against the Minnesota Vikings, against the Oakland Raiders, there needs to be improvement with this offense. Because there is no way in hell in the second year of a new offense that you're worse than you were in the first year. Not even just the first year, the first half of the first game last year. Remember that? When they came out against the Green Bay Packers, they opened that game up like a house of fucking fire. We was like, damn, we didn't expect that. But fast forward a year later, and they can't even score fucking touchdowns. This offense needs to improve, and it needs to start next Monday in D.C. against the Redskins. And it's sad because in my previous video, I said the same shit. Said the Bears had three extra days. 10 days total to get this offense back on track. And I knew it wasn't going to be easy. They were going up against Vic Fangio, who was a very familiar face. Obviously, he knows Matt Nagy. He knows Mitch Trubisky in his offense. But come on, man. You need to do better than that. But fortunately for them, they came out of Denver with a W. And that's very important in this league because if you would have lost that game, man, that would have been sad as hell. Especially with this defense, man. You know, they only giving up 10 points, 14 points. But, but man, I just hope the offense gets better. The defense is not going to be able to do it every single week. There's going to be times when the offense needs to pick up the defense. 
And for Bears fans, we need to have that faith that the offense could do such things as we continue throughout the season. But shout out to the game MVP again, Eddie Pinheiro, converting on all four of his kicks yesterday, including two 50-plus field goals, a 52-yarder, and of course the 53-yard walk-off game-winning field goal. And it's good that he had that moment because he's already a guy who has a lot of confidence in himself. But as for anybody that's confident in anything that they're doing, it's always good when you can actually show the results. So it was good that Eddie Pinheiro made that 53-yard field goal to win the game. You had the guys behind him. You had everybody happy. All his teammates celebrating. Everybody talking him up. Players, coaches included. I can't go on record and saying he's going to be the next Robbie Gold. He's going to be a super efficient kicker for the next 10 years or so with the Bears. But I have hopes, you know, because it beats the alternative where the guy can barely make a 50-yard field goal or the guy's missing every fucking thing. But it's good to see Eddie Pinheiro out there making field goals, making clutch field goals, game winning field goals, and continuing to grow his confidence and not only his confidence, but his teammates' confidence, his coach's confidence, and of course, all of us Bears fans being more confident in our kicker because this was the big question in the offseason, right? You know, besides Mitch Trubisky, it was the kicking situation and whether or not the Bears could find a good enough kicker that won't fuck their whole season up. Well, so far, so good with Eddie Pinheiro. Like I said, it's only been two weeks. Let's not anoint him the next Robbie Gold just yet. But I'm liking what I'm seeing right now. You know, how can I not? But for now, it's not the kicking we got to worry about. It's this damn offense that we have to worry about. And hopefully, they get their shit together. Matt Nagy rallied the troops. You don't have guys on social media afterwards talking about what the fuck going on. But yes, this team has a lot of expectations. And it's time for the offense to start living up to that. We'll see what happens in D.C., but they got to start showing that. But it is a victory Monday. The Bears come home with a 16-14 victory in a tough environment at Mile High against the Denver Broncos, against their former defensive coordinator with the altitude and all the other bullshit. The Bears come away with a W, but this offense needs to get better. But I'm out. Like the video and share this video with fellow Bears fans, fellow football fans, fellow sports fans. Share with everybody. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take it easy. God bless. Bear down. Peace.